Hey fabulous foodies, welcome back to our channel. Today's video will spice up your kitchen routine a bit. For fans of cast iron or simply kitchen enthusiasts who enjoy experimenting, you will have to pay close attention because the last thing one needs is for their skillet to be turned into a culinary crime scene. So put on your aprons and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already yet to learn about 5 foods that should never be cooked in a cast iron skillet. Alright folks, let's kick things off with a fishy twist. Delicate fish in your cast iron skillet. Now, we all we all know cast iron skillets are good for the kitchen, but when it comes to delicate fish like flounder, they might just be a tad too intense. Cast iron's incredible heat retention can be a little too much for these tender sea creatures, causing them to stick to the pan like they've met their culinary nemesis. The result? A fish flipping fiasco. And nobody wants their seafood masterpiece turning into a fishy fiasco, right? So when you're dealing with delicate fish that demand a gentle touch, put the cast iron aside and reach for a non-stick pan. Your flaky friends will thank you for it and you'll avoid turning your kitchen into a fish drama zone. Let's start with a fishy point, delicate fishes in your cast iron skillet. As you probably know, cast iron skillets are great in the kitchen, however delicate fish like flounder might just be a little too intense. The awesome heat retention abilities of the cast iron may be too much for these delicate sea creatures as they will stick to such a pan like their culinary foe. The result? A fish flipping fiasco. And no one would like his or her masterpiece seafoods to transform into a fishy disaster, right? Do not use cast iron in situations when you deal with sensitive fish, which requires a soft approach. It's best to choose a non-stick pan in such situations. You'll be glad for this as your kitchen won't become a fish version of staying alive. One of the most important elements when it comes to high heat cooking is what kind of oil you are using in your cast iron skillet. While cast iron is a good bet for the blazing high heat scenes, success lies in choosing the right oil. Cast iron can stand the heat effectively, but these low smoke point oils will not have that luxury. Cooking with these precious oils at such high temperatures is tantamount to playing with fire in a very literal sense. This leads you to the burnt oil and and a meal that has more flavor of regret than cooking wonders. This happens because the oils that have lower smoke points go up in smoke once they are subjected to the high heat of cast iron and all you're left with is a repulsive rancidity which no human palate deserves. However, if you are planning to get that perfect seasoned pan, an oil with a high smoke point will do the job. They'll handle the heat well, assuring a seamless seasoning procedure that will result in your cast iron being at its optimum performance. Contrary to popular belief, acidic foods such as tomato sauce or meat cooked in wine are not destroyed by the Iron Kingdoms. Nevertheless, there is a problem, red zone if you wish. When these acids are left to cook too long in the skillet, that's where the trouble develops. Marinating in a cast iron pan? That's a recipe for disaster. Since most marinades are acidic troublemakers and we do not want our faithful frying pan to become a rust haven. Additionally, to be honest, cast iron and the fridge snuggles are no friends. There's no popping of the foil over the top and putting it in refrigerator. That is why they invented Tupperware in the first place, my dear friends. What happens if you allow that acidic sauce to stay in your cast iron pan a little too long? So prepare yourself for a metallic tasted disaster or a seasoning failure. These are two kitchen nightmares you certainly want to avoid. It is now time to discuss the sweet side of things such as sugar, caramel, and also candy making. As it turns out, your cast iron skillet may be just the villain that you don't need in this candy cooking story. A cook that wants to make candy or create the perfect caramel will need gear capable of even heat distribution and surprise a cast iron does not qualify. Cast iron is known for heating up unevenly while cooking, and the moment it gets hot, it clings on to that same radiant warmth like a koala on a eucalyptus tree. When it comes to sugar, there's no space for any mistakes. Candy crafting is like a balancing act in the culinary world. When your confection meets an equilibrium point of temperature, color, and texture, you have to bring down the heat while also cooling off as fast as possible. This is how copper dominates the stage, guys. It is the candy-making superhero that delivers the sort of super responsiveness real cast iron cookware can never ever hope to match. So when you need to work with sugar, give your cast iron skillet a rest and let copper steal the show. Remember in the field of candy preparation, the worst that can happen is for a sugary symphony to become a sticky skillet disaster. Suppose that you have decided to cook a satisfying breakfast of scrambled eggs in an ill-seasoned cast iron pan. Spoiler alert, it isn't going to be a very pretty sight. The eggs will stick to the pan as if on a mission, only releasing them after you finally manage it and then cleaning up. 
Well, I would say that's a kitchen nightmare. Yes, a well-seasoned cast iron skillet should be almost non-stick, but honestly speaking, when was the last time you seasoned your pan? Speaking of grains, like rice, yes, you could try to cook the rice in your cast iron skillet, but that's something of a square peg and round hole situation. It's not the very best option due to its shallow design and also the absence of a lid. For rice, stay with your usual pot. It has the lid and room for those grains to give themselves a nice fluffy. With that being said guys, those are the basics of what not to cook in your cast iron skillet. Please like this video if you found it very useful and share with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe for more cooking tips and also kitchen adventures. Until the next time, happy cooking!